Morning Connections. It's Friday, November 5th, 21. The end of another week. Well done. It is not easy to continue to pursue God. The devil wants to throw everything he can at you to convince you to lay down and quit. And only the mightiest of warriors will persevere, continue to push forward, and win the day. We seek to hear at the end of our journey, well done, good and faithful servant. The beauty of being in relationship with God, the beauty of being a mighty warrior, all the guesswork is removed. The stronger we become in our faith, the stronger we become in our relationship with God, the more confidence we have that everything that we do, everything that, that God calls us to, will work out for the good of others and for our well-being as well. I call this a sure thing. We spend a lifetime searching out, making up pros and cons lists to find the sure thing. And we are often, if not always, disappointed. We shop late night TV or whatever the equivalent is on the internet. And it looks so good from a screen. I just got to have that. That would solve all of my problems if I could just spend $19.99. If we're ordering things off of late night TV, <laughs> We know disappointment because it never lives up. The sure thing in our minds is almost better than, than what actually manifests when we receive it in the mail. It's, it's small, it's plasticky, it's already broken. Gamblers have this drive as well. Spend thousands of dollars, certain that they've developed the system, they understand better than anyone else, and this bet is a sure thing. The world pursues and desires a sure thing, and they look everywhere else but God. And I'm here to tell you, and I'm preaching to the choir once again, because you're here, but I'm telling you, you've made the right choice. God is your sure thing. The only sure thing. All of the rest of it are fakes. That's what Paul learned in his journey, and that's what he is trying to convey to the, the church in Philippi. That's what the why his letters are part of God's word is because God wants you to know that what was true for the church in Philippi is true for the church in Tallahassee. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death.
I've shared with many of you that each and every day is an act of faith to, to produce this devotional, to continue to seek God and the words that he would have me share and counsel, how I operate um, throughout my entire day. My day begins here with you, and before I ever hit the broadcast button, my prayer is modeled off of this statement by Paul, who says, I am certain that you will not put me to shame. And I trust that you will not allow me to shame you, Lord. It's a testimony of faith. It is a challenge to step out and, and, and speak God's word. And it happens each and every morning as part of our devotional. It happens each Sunday as I share God's word. And he is good to his promise. He is my sure thing. No matter how anxious I'm feeling, no matter how messed up my week may have gone, when I rest in God, when I center myself, He has never let me down. That's what Paul is expressing. And he prays that it will continue, that he will continue, God will continue to provide the courage that he needs to face the next day and the day after, reminding you that he is imprisoned. And that's what leads to the final statement. I, my desire is to bring glory to God in this life. And that if through my death, a desire to also glorify God. I will finish this work strong. Knowing and trusting that he's in God's hands and that what's beyond this life is his life with God, where there is no more pain, no more suffering, no more tears, only God's presence and love. Interesting thing about Paul's life is that his story began there with the stoning of, of Stephen. And Paul was a few steps removed. He was guarding the the garments of, of those who were doing the, the stoning. But he would have been close enough by to witness Stephen's departure from this world and his embracing of the next. Stephen proclaimed aloud, I can see Jesus at the right hand of God. He had a few breaths of, life, breaths of life left in this world, but he was already present in his life eternal. Perhaps that was Paul's first lesson to learn as he watched a mighty warrior depart. Locked in his brain is... I desire to depart with as much grace and as much strength and courage as I witnessed that day when Stephen departed. Interesting bookends to Paul's ministry. Let's return one last time cliffside and witness what God has done through Jonathan's outrageous act of faith.
He knew that God would show up. It was a sure thing. Might have looked courageous and wacky from the cheap seats, but there was never a doubt in Jonathan's mind and therefore never a doubt in Jonathan's armor bearer's mind. They stepped out in faith and knew that God would show up. Now, God did even greater things, as we talk about thinking bigger, than, than perhaps Jonathan ever expected. Perhaps Jonathan just thought, we're going to make our mark on this. We are going to leave this world strong and encouraged. We are going to face against the enemy at all odds. Whatever God has planned, so be it. God had greater plans and he used Jonathan and his armor bearer to win the day. The panic struck the whole army, those in the camp and field and those in the outpost and the raiding parties and the ground shook. It was a panic sent by God. I think it's important that we emphasize here that, that God is the one that delivers the day. We are the instrument that God uses, but God is capable of winning the day on his own. What he grew in Jonathan that day, what he grew in his armor bearer, what he grew in all of Israel was faith. God is the God Almighty, and he is the mightiest of warriors, and he is the one that when we take the smallest step of faith, he meets us with a tremendous outpouring. That's what we witness on this day. Jonathan stepped out in faith and did his part, and God showed up in a glorious way. Same is true for your day today. God is encouraging you forward to step out in faith, trusting that he will be there. And when, he, <laughs> when you step out in faith, he overcomes God continues to encourage us to take the small steps towards him as he takes the giant leaps towards us. That is a sure thing. It's how it is operated from the, the beginning and it's how it will continue to operate for eternity. God overcomes the world. Take it to the bank. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. <laughs> what an honor and a blessing it is to serve you. To always be on the winning side. This world is broken and things look bleak. You've called us to persevere through times of suffering and pain and sickness for the good of those that have yet to respond to your invitation. We never must forget, Lord, that you are God Almighty. And the battle has already been won. All that le is left to determine is how many will join you for eternity. Expand our vision, Lord, so that we might see that you are greater than anything that we face in the world and that when we place ourselves in your hands, it's a sure thing. Give us the courage and the strength to finish our days well. 
for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, another good week in the books. Please strive to become a better mighty warrior and a better man of God, man or woman of God. That's what God has intended you to be from the very beginning. Know that I love you and I miss you. I will see you on Sunday, whether here virtually or there, live and in person, no matter which, till we see each other again, please be good.